I have it with me. Okay. All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to this month this month's Leadership League Student Success uh, Speaker Series. Um, speaking to you all today, we have the honor of having the Vice President of Sales and Marketing at Silver Star Communications, Ms. Liz Acosta. Uh, Liz joined Silver Star Communications in 2011 in the Sales and Business Development team. As she brings more than 20 years in the sales and marketing industry with extensive accolades for establishing creative strategies and optimizing financial returns and business development in uh, rural communication uh, communities. <clears throat> uh, she's a proud working mother of three and a wife of 17 years who works hard for the community that she represents and lives in. Uh, prior to joining Silver Star Communications, she served as director of marketing and sales for advertising ventures and marketing dimensions, <clears throat> I'm sorry, in Northern Car Carolina and Indiana. She strategically balanced rural uh, and metropolitan marketing areas of over 5 million with an extensive portfolio of Fortune 500 clients. Uh, Liz holds a Bachelor of Science in Communications <clears throat> and Journalism uh, minor in English from San Jose University. Since 2020, she has served on the Wyoming Advisory Panel for Students with Disabilities, uh, representing Northwestern Wyoming students and parents. In 2022, Liz joined, <coughs> sorry, uh, the Southwest Wyoming Manufacturing Partnership Executive Leadership Team, <coughs> excuse me, goodness, uh, with a goal to improve workforce development across Southwest Wyoming. We're really excited to have Liz here with us today. So if y'all please welcome Miss Liz Acosta. Thanks guys. Hey listen, I'd love to kind of pull all the people in the back just a little bit closer. So we're just kind of more of a family. Um, I know we don't have a ton of people in this room, so I feel like it'd be great to just kind of bring y'all in a little bit closer. So I don't feel so disconnected from y'all. And I'm, I'm not sure if I'm gonna use the mic. I'm not really a mic person, but um, I did kind of make some notes. I'm not gonna put together some elaborate PowerPoint because Lord knows I do those five times a week within my team. And I'm sure after about 10 minutes, you're all like, okay, let me check my TikTok and who's uh, Snapchatting me and you know the Insta and all that good stuff. So I'll kind of give you guys a little synopsis as you heard a bit of my professional uh, story or history, but um, it goes really back to kind of where I came from, what brought me here today. Um, you're gonna hear this story probably very consistently with everybody that um, is up at this podium, is sharing a little bit about their story and how it relates to you and your goals with leadership or your goals within your personal careers. So mine started, um, if you do the math, obviously it starts to show my age as I start knocking on a certain door. Um, I still feel I'm very young um, to be in my position and I love what I do. I love the communities that we service. So Silver Star is a rural telco communication company that's been in business about 70 years. Um, I've been with the company more than a decade. Um, we service Northwestern Wyoming and Eastern Idaho. So that's where you hear a lot of my connections are in Wyoming, but I do, I'm in Idaho Falls actually two to three times a week. Um, I do have a 16 year old son that lives here. So tend to keep an eye on him. Um, so my story begins in California. I'm actually born and raised in central coast, California. Anybody ever been out there? Everybody even care to go out there? <laughs> so um, don't judge me. I'm from California, um, born and raised from a father who is an immigrant. Um, became, uh, you know, came over at the age of 15 and went through the process, became a naturalized citizen, proud to be an American, proud to contribute to his community and where he lives. A mother who's an amazingly strong woman, born and raised in California. I came from a strong family, the youngest of five children. Um, if you're the youngest in a family, you know you've worked hard for everything that you've had because nothing was handed to you from the point where I remember every summer I was in the fields picking strawberries 
picking strawberries, y'all, because that is what my parents told me to learn to work hard and the value of a dollar. I mean, my fingers hurt, my back hurt. I was sunburned, but I'll tell you what, I never discounted the value of hard work. And so from very young, I would say I've always been had that hustling mentality that you have to work hard. Nothing is handed to you. Nothing is given to you. Even if you go hard and get an amazing degree, which I went to multiple colleges, started at Cabrillo College for my junior college because, you know, financially the youngest of five, my parents were like, we're done. We're not paying for your education. If you want to go to college, you're going to have to work for it. So I remember having three jobs when I was at UC Santa Barbara, three jobs from bartending to working at the corner market to saying, how am I going to pay my rent? And back then, I mean, this is the early 90s, tuition was $9,000 a quarter, expensive, and I was in state. And so I just got to the point where I'm like, I can't pay this. I need to go to a state college to say, how can I balance the both? Well, guess what? I did it back then and y'all can do it now. Whatever your struggles are, your tribulations or however you're managing your education, you can do it. And that's a consistent thing that you'll probably find with any leadership is that they have that go-to attitude, that will-do attitude that anything can be accomplished. So, you know, when you're finding that in your work-life balance that you're plateauing, just find that special thing that says, you know what, I can do this. I can, whatever that dream may be, whether it's, you know, I want to be a doctor, I want to run my own business, I want to be an executive for a firm. What is that one thing that just motivates you to get up in the morning and do that? So kind of speeding it up, you know, I I was a journalism major. I ended up, you know, doing an amazing internship back east in North Carolina for, I, I mean, my long-term plan was I was going to be on network news. I was going to build those relationships. I was going to be in, go back to law school and be in an entertainment lawyer and represent all those rich people. Well, guess what? That fell flat because I never ended up doing that. So what I did do is I did an amazing internship in broadcast journalism. And through that, I found a love in marketing and sales. And really, that has been my passion for so many years. And when you think about it, everybody has a little bit of salesperson in them, in everything that you do. From the way you put together your TikToks and you sell yourself, from the way that you were in high school and telling your mom and negotiating, guess what, I'm going to go out tonight. And if you say no, I'm going to go ask dad and get a different answer, right? So we're all sales people in our own right. It's how are you going to negotiate your way through life for your personal successes? And guess what, guys? I didn't write really a speech here. I'm kind of ad-libbing, so I'd love to get some feedback as we kind of go along. Because the takeaway is if you're not getting anything when I'm done talking, then all this was pointless right? Because there's got to be some takeaway that you're learning through your process in school that you're going to take away and says, you know what, that is the secret to success. What is that going to make me successful? What that is, is you're going to determine as we're having this conversation today. So I ended up working in marketing and sales in uh, for several companies in North Carolina, worked my way up, ended up representing a very large firm out of Canada and represented a 5 million market in the Indianapolis and really found that, you know what? I love sales. I love people. I love collaborating. I love building and leveraging relationships for the benefit of myself, for the benefit of the company, for the benefit of the product, for the benefit of the customer. And so that's what kind of brought me here today is, um, which I have to say is really interesting because over the last decade, I've done a really great job about talking about products and services and Silver Star and what we can do for people within the community and our customers. But it was really interesting to have some self-reflection to say, what is a successful leader? Well, think about it in your lives. So let's take myself, for example, as a mother. It's truly a balance let's take the work life out of it so it's truly a balance being a mother to say how can i be successful mother well you know what as a, those of you that are mothers in the room that is a struggle 
And it's a struggle being a working mother to compartmentalize and saying, how do I be an amazing mother for my child who has just turned 16 years old, move out of the house, he's now playing for the Idaho Falls Butt Kings, and he's balancing online school, he's balancing work, and he's going through his mental challenges of like, is this the right fit for me? And then I have a middle child who's a teenager who um, just went through major surgery over the last year who had literally we call her Dr. Octopus because she had from her T3 from her neck to her pelvis reconstructed in her spine. So she just had major surgery where she was bedridden for four months, six months of recovery. As soon as she recovered, she was back in the hospital to reconstruct her ent entire lower body from her knees to her feet. She's been cast for the last two months, bedridden and going through emotional challenges as a teenager. And I get choked up because this is really hard. And all this has happened in the last year. Then I have a little child, God forbid, poor Keelan, has kind of been forgotten in the wind. And so part of my role is not just leadership in the business world, it's leadership in your personal lives to say, how do you learn to compartmentalize and be that mentor and leader for everyone? You know, and that's that's sometimes where leaderships you have to dig in deep and say, how can I constantly be that motivating person? How can I be that motivating person to my 14 year old daughter who is going through her mental struggles because she, as a, she can't be a normal teenager. She can't even walk when a year ago she was walking and she's going through, you know, pain that is the most insane pain because she has two fentanyl drips you know, in her back for an entire month in, in a hospital. So I encourage you the next time somebody complains about pain, I said, yeah, don't complain about it because I'll tell you about a 14 year old girl that probably had more mental toughness and went through it all in the last year. So when you think your life is tough, have some perspective. Um, you know, I do, I swear I will never complain about foot pain or back pain ever again, but the point is, is that leadership comes in your life in different fashions. It's not always going to come in 10 years when you're in that successful career. It's going to come today of how, do, how am I dealing with all the challenges in my life? How am I compartmentalizing and saying what I have in front of me is okay. I'm not that overwhelmed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to compartmentalize and find that one thing that I'm really, really good at and I'm going to nail it down. Because I think that is sometimes the challenges that I'm seeing with my children in, in being teenagers. And what I'm seeing in the younger groups today is that you got to remember when I was back then, I didn't have TikTok. I didn't have social media. I didn't have Instagram or Snapchat. I didn't have those social influences and peer pressures to be elevated and to be this great and to make me feel like I was nothing. And that's the influences that the younger generation is having today. And so what I encourage you is sometimes when you get to that point, be a true leader within yourself and say, you know what, I can accomplish this one thing today and that's okay. Because I may not accomplish the four other or five other things in front of me, but I will get to that tomorrow. So part of leadership for me that um, I do have some notes here that I just wanted to go through and I apologize I'm talking fast, but I feel like we only have about 20 minutes here. So one thing for me is to have a passion and commitment behind your business. So find that conviction of what motivates you to do your best and you will find that that's what motivates others to do their best. And I'll repeat that, have a passion and commitment behind your business. And your business can be anything. It can be your TikTok business. It can be your YouTube business. It can be the business, business of managing your household. What is that passion and commitment that you have that you can be really good at and find success? Um, and your ability to communicate your vision. That's super important. You know, when I did sales, my vision and my book of business was myself. And it's been a real challenge over the last year going from a silo and saying, I know what I'm good at. I know what my bench strengths are to saying, you know what? I need to be able to create this vision and this passion for everyone else on the team. I need to have some self-reflection and a big cup of humility, a really big cup of humility, because I'll tell you what, in sales and marketing, you can get really, really 
arrogant and confident in who you are and what you do. But when you are a leader and you have to be a lot more collaborative, you have to drink a big cup of humility, big cup of humble tea, because you know what? You're not going to be the best at everything. And that's something that I've actually had to learn in the last year is to say, part of being a good leader is recognizing your weaknesses. I'm not going to be great at everything, but you know what? I'm going to find amazing people who have that strength to fill in where I fail. And that's what leadership is. And that's okay. And that's really hard for people in today's world because the whole picture that we put out there is that I'm the amazing person on TikTok and I do these amazing dances and look at me and how great I am and look at how beautiful I am with all these filters. Well, guess what? It's not just you because there's probably someone recording you and there's probably someone editing that for you, right? So, and I know I'm kind of talking to a bit of a younger generation because maybe some people in the back don't have TikTok. I don't have TikTok, <laughs> but my kids have TikTok, okay? So, um, I just wanted to put that out there. So, the other one is demonstrate dominant experience in what you're doing. If you're good at it, don't be scared to share that you're good at something. Don't be scared to share, as someone told me, your, your secret sauce. And that's been a hard challenge going and changing that mindset from just a salesperson to a leader to say, you know what, I've been great at what I've been doing, but it doesn't matter if I can't teach them. It doesn't matter if I can't share that because I've been in the mindset of a competitive nature. Now I have to switch to be in the mindset of a more collaborative nature. And that's what true leadership does is that if you're good at something, share it because you're gonna build a team and people will follow. Um, strengthen your network of relationships. You know, I look back to when I was in high school, not even college, and I knew that I wanted to be a journalism major. I knew I wanted to be a broadcast, whether it was radio, print, or television, primarily television. Um, I built, my, I built my network and my relationships. I did a lot of internships when there wasn't internships programs. I was like, how can I volunteer? How can I help? What can I do? How can I carry the cables? Um, I went to radio stations and said, how can I be on air? I'll just talk about fashion and how fabulous it is. Um, you know, get out there. If you find what your passion is, I don't care if there's not a program. Create a program. Create that vision, sell that vision or whatever, whatever it is. Not only are you gonna learn from it, but you're gonna benefit to the company or the partnership that you're collaborating with, but you're gonna learn what works and what doesn't work for you before you get into the true workforce. So I encourage you to do that. If you have not done that today, hustle, get off it, start working, put your boots on and really do the work. I just heard that in a video from the Idaho Falls Spud Kings, just so you know plug for them. Um, and willingness to make timely decisions. This is, I see this a lot. Um, and I go back to my children because I see right now they're making these decisions, especially my 16 year old. When you make a decision, commit to it. There is no room for failure. Failure is when you, when you quit. Failure is when you give up. So if you make the decision to work at a job, commit to it. Find everything that you can to be better at your role. Don't wait for people to teach you and, and guide you. They will, but you've got to give that extra. And that's a balance of being a leader and being an entrepreneur. You know, what mindset do you fall into? What extra are you willing to give to Excel? Um, encourage innovation and out of the box thinking. You know, this is something I think consistently you, I've probably heard it in the last 10 years is how can you be different? How can you, uh, you know, let's just say you took a job at Jamba Juice. How can you be creative and out of the box thinking? I'm going to pick on you right here. If you just started a job at Jamba Juice, where, what would you do to push the boundaries to be out of the box and be creative and add to the position that you're in? Fantastic. I love it. What's what's another example? You know I'm gonna start picking on people. Okay. 
I love that. You know what that reminds me of? So in our, we've been in business 70 years, Silver Star Communications, and we just redid our retail space and our retail thinking. And if you know anything, so Silver Star is telecom. Does anybody know what telecom is? Okay, this is a great thing. I feel like I just glazed over them. Um, everyone, telecom is internet. Does, is there anybody here who doesn't have internet? Raise your hand if you don't have internet. Nobody. Okay. So it's a, when, when we say telecommunications, it's an internet com company, a communications company. So we do everything from fiber optic internet. Um, we started in copper. We did have cable facilities at one time. Um, anything from your voice content to your phone content to uh, let's take the Mountain America Center. If we're going to put Wi-Fi access points and everybody wants to connect to the internet out there. Um, we have a variety of solutions that we actually do, but internet is the primary product that we offer. So I was getting to the point of Royal Telecom, you know, we always had retail spaces. Back in the day, we used to sell cellular phones and people used to come in and hook up their phones. We got into the cellular business last year and um, we transitioned our model because we're finding more people are digital. People are signing up for internet. If you look at Comcast or Charter or Spectrum or Sparklight, or, they're all signing up digitally. Very few people are walking in anymore and signing up for their internet. So we're recognizing the shift and the change and saying, how can we be more innovative to support those people? And so what we did is our model is, guess what? We're not, we're not doing our retail space. But if we do do our retail space, how can we be more collaborative? Have you ever walked into an AT&T store and they're not standing behind? What are they doing? They're walking up and opening the door for you and they're saying, come on in, you know, creating that interactive experience. You walk in, they're bright. They have screens here. Everybody can walk in and have that interactive experience. So it's a changing the way you communicate your customers. And that's out of the box thinking, being more innovative, because we can still continue to be this old school retail space that has been in business for 70 years. But you know what? We're not listening to the customer. And we're starting more companies, especially rural telecom. Rural, rural means obviously we service Northwestern Wyoming, very rural area. You know, I would say our biggest footprint is Eastern Idaho, but most of what we service is very rural area, just very spread out. And there's a lot of funding right now if you're paying attention to what's going on with the feds. There's billions of dollars that is being dumped into federal funding to build out very rural underserved areas. So you look at eastern Idaho, you guys probably have a cable service provider with really high fast speed speeds. Maybe not. There's, well, we're, we're bringing fiber here. We have. But um, in rural America, I don't know if y'all remember back in the days of the early 90s of dial-up. Anyone? AOL, the guy running across the screen? Most of you probably don't remember, and that's okay. Let's just say when you're complaining about your 50 meg service, try not even one megabyte. You're complaining about 50. One. You know, you couldn't stream. You couldn't do any social. I mean, you're lucky if you can send an email in 10 minutes. It was slow. And that's what people still have across rural Wyoming. And it's sad. And so what we are working to do is bridge that digital divide to say, how can we be more strategic and apply for all these amazing grants and out of the box thinking to serve our communities? And that's what's super important of being in leadership is saying, you know what? We have a lot of a really amazing customer base that we do service that have great connectivity, but our main responsibility is to be serving our rural communities, which is huge. So I love the out-of-the-box out thinking um, and encouraging innovation. Uh, accepting responsibility for your business and role within a company. Anybody want to take a jab at what I'm, what I'm meaning by that? Anyone? Oh, come on. I'm going to wait until somebody answers. Let's go. That's a good one. Yeah, absolutely. And it goes back to my kind of reference of humility. You know, you're not always going to be right. And that's okay. And you're going to make mistakes. And that's okay. And that's what t t it takes really in leadership. That's okay. Guess what? I wasn't always the greatest at my job. And I'm still learning. And I'm still not the greatest at my job. You know, it's, I'm in a very, I will say, a very um, male-dominated industry. Rural telephony, if you look at the numbers, 
there's not very many, uh, there's less than 15 women in leadership and executive leadership in roles. Now we won't even go down the path of saying how many Latinas there are because I haven't found one yet. But it's amazing because it's, it's, it, it is, it's empowering to say, you know what, there's a lot of opportunity out there and the roles are shifting and changing and they aren't what they used to be. And that's the beauty of not just rural telephony, but telecom in, 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 in general. Telecom is exploding and it's a great industry to be in because everybody needs connectivity. It's almost like healthcare. Everybody needs a doctor, right? So where a lot of companies and industries have taken a shift since 2020 and the market shifting, everybody still doesn't matter how many pennies you got to scratch together. Everybody's going to still want their internet. Wouldn't you agree? But it's finding innovative and creative ways to support that as well. There's a lot of great, what's called the Affordability to Connect program that connects people who don't have the financial means. And our goal and our responsibility in our company is to make sure that we're connecting those people in rural areas as well as underserved areas who don't have fiber optics, who probably are on that dial up or on that cable connection that is not supporting their needs. Because back in the day, even like mental health, it was you go in to see a counselor. Nowadays, it's really easy to plug into someone virtually with mental health or with telehealth. And it's nice because 2020 really propelled that. So I, I think I'm probably running out of time, but I would love to open the floor for any questions. Yeah. Um, how were you able to embrace uh, change? Because over the years, we started off, you know, not, about, not a lot of internet, now we're getting to the point where we have to deal with everything is basically internet and it's over online. So how did you embrace like changing, uh, moving over towards not as much as so basically everything is? Yeah, that's a, you know, that's a really good question. Um, I'm not sure, did everybody hear the question is how do we embrace change especially um, since everything wasn't internet-based. Today, now we're finding everything's internet-based. You know, for us, that's been a unique challenge, especially since the majority of our customers in rural telecom are probably 65 and older. And it's saying, how do I explain technology to my mother, who's 84 years old? And how do I teach her how to do it? And it's been an interesting challenge because my mother has a ton of doctors and she still has a flip phone. And they're saying, well, we need to confirm your appointment via email or text. And I'm like, yeah, she can't do that. Let me help her. So it's been a challenge of education. Um, and that's our responsibility, not to just say, well, guess what, guys, everything's digital and you're going to have to learn to adapt. And that's the beauty of being a small rural telco is we've learned to really educate strong education through social platforms, through emails, through letters, through open forums to be able to educate our community. And that's still an ongoing challenge and an ongoing um, process that we're going through right now. So there's no perfect answer. I, I would say, you know, it's a process. It's, it's certainly an evolving process because the changes that are happening with telecommunications and the technology industry are, are really happening at a very exponential speed. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, I touched upon this a couple of minutes ago, but how do you feel when you come across somebody as a leader who feels they know it all? How do I come across someone as a leader who knows it all? That is a tough one, you know, um, because there's more of a cultural shift with people today, especially I would say um, there's a there's a strong shift of individuals who have that mindset. And, you know, it's it's not discounting what they know but it's embracing what they know that may be a weakness of yours. And I feel like sometimes people will get defensive because they're in a leadership role and say, well, I'm a leader and I know it all. And it's part of that humility that I talked about to say, you know what, I don't know it all, but there's a piece of what you're gonna give me as knowledge and I accept that. And that's, I think, a personal choice that everybody that you're gonna learn over time. Because I think when I was really young, I was a lot more arrogant. <laughs> 
a lot more. Um, I'm very confident because I was having those deliverables and it's that's a hard shift of how you teach people how to embrace that, to say, you know what, it's okay. I, I don't know everything and there's something that you're gonna teach me and I accept that. So I think that's a personal choice that each individual is gonna have to evolve to. And then maybe just frankly tell them, guess what? How about wait 15 years and then come back to me with that? <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember that you were saying that you really wanted to be uh, a lawyer. I think you mm -hmm. mentioned. Do you miss that or would you go and change your career now at this point? You know, it's it's interesting. So he asked, you know, at one point I did want to go into law and it's still an underlying passion of mine. The beauty of telecom industry is there's an industry and in lobbying and it's something that I'm finding. That's why I went into this role is because there's a lot of shift that's happening at the legislative and legal um, in D.C. and some of the changes that are happening. And so it's the new challenge of leadership that I'm looking for is not how can I leverage and build the relationships that I have with the community and the businesses that I have, but how can I build and leverage those relationships in DC for the benefit of all telecom? And it's a learning process. I am, you know, at the very early stages of learning about it. We have an individual within our company who is amazing at it. And it's really part of my role in leadership to learn from that individual to say, how can I be successful? But there is a part of lobbying that includes law that I get to kind of fill my bucket when I get there. So I'll check back with you in a few years. Anyone else? Perfect. Well, we would really like to thank you for coming. Oh, thanks. Thank so it was great. Being here. I appreciate everyone. Yeah. And on behalf of the college, I would oh like to God, present I'm you so with this uh, token thanks. of appreciation. I have a t-shirt. <laughs> so now I get a sweatshirt. Superstar. Well, thank you guys. This was awesome. I, I really appreciate your time that you committed half an hour to come and listen to me. Just remember, you are just as fabulous in everything that you do. And I'm looking forward to everyone's, you know, new ventures and what your future aspirations are and hope to see you guys in uh, some pretty awesome leadership roles in the coming year. And remember, it doesn't have to happen 10 years out. It can happen now. So that's my my parting words is leadership is just really happens when you decide to make that happen. So cheers, y'all. Bye, guys. All right. Thank you, everyone, so much for coming. If you'll please fill out the surveys that we passed out to you um, so that we can get your feedback and improve our next speaker series, that would be awesome. Thank you. I'm going to go to the next one.